All right, so what are you thankful for? Here's some things people are thankful for. Some wives are thankful for husbands who attack small repair jobs around the house because they usually make them big enough to call a professional. That's definitely, actually, I just, I just called a professional right away because my, my handiwork uh, is done with the yellow pages. That's a, that's a yellow, how many remember the yellow pages? We don't even get those anymore, do we? You have to, you have to Google everything around, right? All right, so we're thankful for children who put away their things and clean up after themselves, and there's such a joy, you, you hate to see them go home to their own parents. So. <laughs> we're grateful for teenagers because they give parents the opportunity to learn a second language. What's up? All right, so we're thankful, especially at our house, we're thankful for smoke alarms because they do let us know the turkey is done. Okay, I'd pause after that one. That's a really good one. How, how many know that the, the Butterball, there's a Butterball turkey line that you can call Butterball if you're having an issue? How many knew that? It's right on your Butterball. You can call the turkey line. You know what they have now? You can text Butterball if you have a problem. So all you people who don't like phoning people, like all the young people, right? You phone them, they won't answer. You text, they go, what do you want? Like they're right there, but they won't answer. They won't talk to you, but they will text you. For all you people who must text, you can now text Butterball with a question. Isn't that good? How many said, thank you for that information? I didn't know that. It was good. Get informative stuff at church. All right. So one of the questions on the hotline they called in, one guy said, I cut the turkey in half with my chainsaw and I got some oil on it. Will that be okay? It was Brian Keener, by the way. But anyway. Right. <laughs> one lady called. She was having a problem with her turkey. And the person on the phone said, well, tell me, what, what kind of state is your turkey in right now? She said, the turkey's in Florida. What, 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 what's, what kind of state is your turkey in? The turkey's in Florida. <laughs> it's not that funny. I thought it was really good. I've circled here. Wait a minute, because they're falling off their chairs. Let them, let them get themselves back together. All right. So I got a turkey this week. I bought a turkey. I bought a turkey and a big primary roast. It's kind of funny because checking out the lady said, "So you're giving your wife options?" I said, "Absolutely. You know, it's good stuff." So. <laughs> giving your wife options that's what she said so so i'm there picking the turkey and it's a butter ball it says you can it's already stuffed so i thought i'd be considerate to cheryl it's already stuffed not that cheryl stuffing isn't awesome but uh reminds me of a joke why did the you know why did the turkey say he was already full and didn't ask for any more turkey dinner why because he was already stuffed <laughs> so anyway so this this bird in the freezer was already stuffed and it's got a tag on it says that you cook this turkey from frozen so i'm like that's interesting. It's already stopped. I'm looking. I don't know. Wondering how big a turkey we need. And this lady kind of came in, elbowed her way in. You know, the turkeys were on sale, like a buck forty-nine. I thought that was a pretty good deal. But she came in real eager, pushed me away with her elbows. You know, she couldn't find anything, though. And there was one of the guys with those big stainless steel bins, you know, loading up fresh meat, putting things out. She turned around, excuse me, come here, come here. And he, he came over and says, yes, ma'am, how can I help you? He says, do these get any bigger? And he says, of course not. They're dead. <laughs> Lady, you can't take it home and it'll be a 25 pounder in the morning. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just. Uh, uh, okay. That's, all right. Okay. It's Thanksgiving. We've got stuff to be thankful for. I'm so thankful. Aren't you thankful? I mean, I'm so blessed in every way. I can't believe it's, I mean, almost after three of me just to enjoy it all. So I'm excited over and above. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 16 to 18. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Amen. Not for everything. Cause you know, you're driving along and the tire goes, and, you know, blew up a tire. You go, praise God. Hallelujah. The tire blew up. Woo. That's not exciting. But you know what? You can still be thankful in the middle of that. You can still be excited. You can have something to be thankful. I had a, I had a tire blow up on me coming down the highway, coming into Cincinnati. If you've been coming down the hills, coming into Cincinnati on that, it was like suddenly five lanes of traffic. I'm on the fast lane because I'm a fast driver because I got places to go. But I got this minivan and I'm driving. 
I went, oh my God. I mean, the tire blew up and I looked behind me. I got tractor trailers to the left of me, tractor trailers to the right. Here I am stuck in. I mean, it was messy. You remember that, Cheryl? That was crazy. And I'm telling you, I was like, oh my God. And I'm like, Rah! I was like doing everything I could to try to get over to the right, you know, and, and I'm like, ah, oh, the tire blew up. You know, Man, right there, I tire blew up, and I said, thank God we're alive, hallelujah, because that was rough. And then we went off and got a new tire. That was fun, wasn't it? I should, what? It did have a thud, 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 thud in it before we left Canada, and I still, with the thud, 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 drove 5,000 miles with it. But anyway, so, so be thankful that even when you're a real wiener, <laughs> procrastinator, Cheryl said, we should get that fixed before we drive all the way to Florida. Ah, no problem. Thank you, Jesus. You know, he takes care of me even though, even though. Say even though. Well, how many got some even those in your life? Bow your head and confess it right now. Okay, well, that was good. So we give thanks. We give thanks. Why? Because this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. That's good, isn't it? It's the will of God for you to rejoice. You know, pray without ceasing. Stay in a constant relationship with him. Enjoy that relationship and always give thanks because you know what? He's a good God and he's never going to fail you. Man, that was good right there. I could just say amen and we could go eat turkey right there. I could, but I'm not going to do it. So give thanks for that. <laughs> okay, all right. Hans Selye, I think, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. He's a endocrinologist an endocrinologist um, anyways in his study as an endocrinologist he studies the effects of stress on the human body this is him he's a doctor he's somebody who studies this stuff he said gratitude produces more positive emotional energy than any other attitude in life an attitude of thanksgiving an attitude just approaching every day with thanks with gratitude that will cause more positive emotional energy in your life than any other attitude come on that right there was really good aren't you glad i didn't quit when i said i was gonna because they got that say thank you you know what man you know you literally you can change your mind you can you can deal with the mess in your brain that's messing up your body you can heal yourself by changing your mind Pastor Bobby talked about that last week, so you got all that stuff figured out. So Colossians 3, verse 17, And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do it all. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Give thanks. Come on, turn your neighbors and give thanks. Say it's Thanksgiving, give thanks. Ephesians 5, 19, sing. Say sing. Sing. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father. Can I get a sing? Sing. I can feel we're singing today. What a wonderful name it is that as we're singing, I don't know if you knew it, but your life was being changed by your own words. You were singing yourself into a better place. You were singing. You were changing the whole atmosphere of your own life. And God was invading you because you were singing. How many were not singing because you don't sing very good? Sing anyways. It says, make a joyful noise. I do believe that is people who can't sing just doing their best. My wife is an amazing singer. She's the only one I know who can play the guitar in one key and sing in another one all together and sees no reason why it's at all awkward. And she'll look at me like, what? I'm like, that was so awesome. You're so gifted. Not. Okay, so, so man. Psalm 50, verse 23 from the Amplified Bible. He who brings an offering of praise, he or she, whoever it is, the person who's bringing that offering of praise and thanksgiving honors and glorifies God. But listen to this now. When you do that, you prepare the way that God can show you his salvation. So if you're saying, man, I need some stuff, I need some heavy, heavy cargo to get from heaven to earth. I need some heavy cargo to get from the unseen realm into the seen realm. I need big truck loads of God's glory, goodness, and mercy to just invade my life. How do you do that? If you just do one thank you, that's one strand. If you do two thank yous, that's a couple of strands. If you do three thank yous, I mean, the more you do it, you're building a bigger highway for more cargo to get pushed into your life. 
And the more gratitude you show, you're preparing a way for God. If you're the person, I said thank you once this month. I mean, you got a little tiny strand, a little tiny way. You've prepared a little way for God that he's trying to push, you know, massive amounts of his grace and goodness to you. But you just won't show any gratitude. Gratitude really is the way that you open up a highway of God's blessing in your life. Amen. Okay, the people who say amen are away today. So could some of you just intercede, just step in, all right? Just, come on, throw me a bone. Amen. amen. All right, that was good. All right. All right, so mm-mm. Psalm 69, verse 30. I will praise the name of my God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. If your God is small, you can make him bigger by saying thank you. And it's not that God gets bigger, because God is transcendent. He fills everything in every way. But your life, God, gets bigger in your experience. He gets bigger in your world. He gets bigger in your circumstances. If you praise him, if you thank him, if you're saying thank you, thank you, thank you, you are making him bigger in your situation, and you're preparing a way that God can invade your circumstances. Can I get a thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Woo! That really wasn't any good. That was pretty rough. I'll try to do it better. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I got a truckload right there. That was good. Whoa! Desmond had to open doors. What's going on in there? What's up? What's going on, Pastor? <laughs> All right, come on, come on. Singing, singing, singing is a big part of God's plan. It's a big part of God's purpose. Everywhere in the Bible, people singing. He's going to give His Son to us. What happens? The clouds open up. Angels are singing. Glory to God in the highest. Whoa! I mean, everywhere, they're singing. They're singing at the start. They study the sun. They, when they look at the sun, it keeps bouncing and waves are coming off the sun. They say the only thing we can say to describe what the sun is doing is the sun is singing. They're, all of creation is constantly in song. All of creation. I love when Carly was singing today. She said, in the trees of the field, they clap their hands. Everything in creation is constantly just glory, glory to God. So everything is singing. Revelation 4, 8, day and night without ceasing. They sing, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the earth. It's full, full. The one who is and is to come, the earth is full of his glory. Sing in. What are we going to finish up with? We're going to finish up with a bride and a groom. We're going to finish up with a wedding feast. And what are we going to do there? We're going to sing. God's big on singing. Singing is a big part of God's program. And you need to sing every day. And you need to sing over yourself. And you need to sing thanksgiving unto God. Because it is the way God has ordained that you're going to change your world. So today, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about why I sing. I don't sing because i got a great voice. Because actually, it's getting worse all the time. It's, it's like gargle head. I don't know what's happened. But, but I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. It's just there. It's just constantly there. How many know, I, all, I knew I was preaching on this, but I had a song service while I was sleeping last night, singing, dancing, shouting all night long songs. How many know you got a song in your head right now? constantly there's a song going on in your spirit you were designed to be constantly singing and enjoying the lord day and night without ceasing they sing martin luther martin luther now there's just a part of the quote i'm going to read the whole quote for you all right there's just a part martin luther said this when man's natural ability is wedded and polished to the extent that it becomes an art 
Then do we note with great surprise the great and perfect wisdom of God in music, which is, after all, his product and his gift. We marvel when we hear music in which one voice sings a simple melody while three or four or five other voices come along artistically with musical effects, thus reminding us of the heavenly dance where all meet in the spirit of friendliness and caress and embrace. A person who gives this some thought and yet does not regard it as a marvelous creation of God must be a clodhopper. Indeed, he does not deserve to be called a human being. He should be permitted to hear nothing but the braying of asses and the grunting of hogs. Don't you wish he was your pastor? And Martin Luther said, man, saying the fact that we can do that together and experience God and waves and this beautiful divine dance is amazing. John Wesley John Wesley said, sing lustily and with good courage. Beware of singing as if you were half dead or half asleep. But let your voice be lifted up with strength. Be no more afraid of your voice now, nor more ashamed of its being heard than when you sung the songs of Satan. Some people, you see them driving in the car screaming out, wah! Sweet Caroline. You know, that was better. What you did for me right there was better than what you were doing a half an hour ago. I mean, some of you, my God. Sweet Holy Ghost. Good times never felt so good. Wow. We could turn that baby around, I think. Hey, you feel that? It's good stuff right there. The Pentagon. The Pentagon. The Pentagon School of Music. It takes 15 months to instruct a producer and a band leader, a song leader. It takes 15 months to produce one of those. By contrast, the Air Force takes only 13 months to prepare a jet pilot fighter. I mean, the Pentagon, they're serious about if you're going to, you know, lead the musicians and the choirs here, we want you to be really, really trained. It takes longer to train somebody to lead the choirs than it does to learn how to drive a jet airplane. Did you know that they say when people march and when people used to sing and when the people in in armies would march together, there was something that happened. There was something that came. There was a cadence that they developed and they were emboldened and they were encouraged as they sang together and they were strengthened. Literally, they were physically empowered to do greater exploits because they sang together. And so they take that singing stuff really, really serious, serious, serious. All right, Psalm 96, I found a text. It's not all up there. I'm going to give you the whole thing. I want to read Psalm 96 to you. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. Declare his glory among the nations. Declare his wonders among the people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge. He shall judge the peoples righteously in the heavens. Rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar in all of its fullness. Let the fields be joyful and all that is in it. Let then the trees and the woods, let them rejoice before God for he is coming. He is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with truth. Sing unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord. Why? Why should I sing unto the Lord? I'm going to give you some reasons to sing unto the Lord. Are you ready? Turn to your neighbor and say, are you ready? All right, number one, singing releases our faith. Singing causes your faith to explode in all kinds of directions. And we're going to talk about five, five directions. Number one, singing releases your faith towards God. It says, sing unto the Lord. Psalm 92, 1 to 4. I read that psalm earlier. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work, and I will triumph in the work 
of your hands. It is really, really good to give thanks to God. How many know? That's why I tell the worship teams. We got to have songs that make Him great. We got to have songs that exalt Him. If we got too many of those songs that are like, You make me feel good. I was sad yesterday, but I feel okay now because you. You made me feel good, and I don't feel so bad anymore because you're awesome to me sometimes. Those are nice songs, you know. But when you just go, God, you are great. God, you are wonderful. You fill everything in every way. Great. Come on, sing with me. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? You know, when you start to sing and make him great, something happens there. And as I said earlier, when you sing like that, when you glorify him, when you make him big, your whole situation is going to change. Because you'll stop looking at what's tearing you down. You'll get your eyes off of the miserable things in front of you, and you'll see God is big. And none of this really matters. Make him great in your circumstances. Amen. And that's why I sing. I I mean, today I'm there. I go, man, I am worshiping God with other people. I'm singing about your greatness with other people. This is so awesome. Because in this atmosphere, there's a bigger sense of your presence. There's a corporate anointing of God that you invade when we praise face to face. God comes in a more significant way. In a way that I can't get by myself. I can't get if I stay home. I can't get anywhere. Something happens when I praise him and declare he's the great God in the sanctuary, God, his power, it multiplies and it's made more available to us. And that's something he planned to do. That's something he did. So it's good to gather and to give him praise and to lift up his name. So why do I sing? I sing because my singing releases God to be big in my circumstances. So when I release singing and release my faith towards God and all that he is in my life. Number two, I release faith towards myself because you're surrounding yourself with music that glorifies God. It actively puts you in the very presence of God. Now, you can go home, do studies on it. You can look at it. There are so many studies that talk about when you sing, you are literally changing your world. When you sing and when you sing things about God and you declare things about him, you heal yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. That's a really good reason to sing. And if you need something shifted in your life, God has given you a song. He put a new song in my heart. He put a new song in me. Something to declare his bigness, his greatness. And when you sing, there is a dynamic that's released in your life, not just to understand and see his greatness, but so that his very presence would permeate and affect your life. That's what I'm standing there going, what a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. Oh, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. You're saying that. There is a transaction taking place in the spirit that is healing your body, that is touching your mind, and that is that is freeing you of emotional attachments that are ruining your life. And it brings wholeness to your whole experience. I sing, releasing my faith towards God, but I sing, releasing my faith towards myself and bringing healing and blessing in my heart and in my life. Got a little cartoon for you right here. When I'm sad, I sing, then I realize my voice is worth my problems. I just thought that was good. So that might be for somebody. I don't know. But that's not a reason to sing. It's not. Make a joyful noise. Sing unto the Lord. It's a good, good thing. All right. That's good enough. Let's go to number three. Towards others. Colossians 3.16 says, sing. And in Ephesians, it says, sing. It says, sing, sing. It says, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing. Rejoicing with your heart unto God. It says when you sing, you're impacting other people. When you sing, what you're singing is admonishing. You can be, you can walk in today and you didn't feel like singing. You can walk in today, but you hear other people praising. All of a sudden people say, what a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. And the person beside you go, what are you so excited about? But you, because of your passion, you're, you're just, you're causing that other person to be stirred up to see Wow, they really think he's wonderful. They really believe he can do something. Maybe I should engage this. Maybe I should get involved. We're singing about the goodness of God. And as we do that, we're admonishing each other. We're encouraging each other. There's something really, really good to do right now. And do it with psalms. Do it with hymns and spiritual songs unto God. Your song impacts others. And singing with others brings your hearts into alignment. Did you know that? They did studies with choirs. They studied choirs as they were singing. They weren't looking for this. They really wanted to study how they were affected physically. But what was interesting, they had everybody, that little 
little clips on all of their ears, and everybody in the whole choir was hooked up to monitors. Now, when they started, it was all over the place. The screens were bouncing everywhere, heartbeats everywhere. They began to sing, and within three or four bars, it was... Every single heart totally aligned with the song. And every single person, they, they weren't even doing the study to find that, but they were amazed that as they watched that, it went from many heartbeats to one heartbeat. And you know, singing is such a powerful thing, because when you're singing, you can align yourself with him. You align yourself with the body of Christ. You bring yourself into union with the heart of what's happening in God and in a room. And singing is not, that's not just, wow, that's interesting that happens. God designed that. So that when we come together, come together. And when you gather together, sing to one another. Admonish to one another. Because there's a heart in the room that's out of beat. And as you start singing, you're going to bring people that are out of rhythm. You're going to bring people whose heart hearts are beating to something else you're going to bring people around you into an alignment with the goodness of god and with one heart you're going to worship and you're going to bless god that's a good thing isn't it man now some of you folks just weren't singing today you're kind of yeah i don't like singing might show up later so i can get past the singing you gotta sing even if your voice is messy like mine sing Sing, because there's something powerful that happens when you sing. It's not just, hey, we do a couple songs before the guy tells a few jokes. It's kind of awesome. No, it's us aligning ourselves with one another, aligning ourselves with the kingdom, releasing the healing power and presence of God into our lives and into our corporate fellowship. Singing is so important. Number four, towards your circumstances. You, when you sing, you can be in an absolute mess. And if you start singing, you can change the environment that you're in. If you would go from grumbling to la, 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 I just broke my leg, la, 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 la. I thank you, Lord, that your word says when I meditate on your word, all of my bones are fresh, all of my flesh is health, all of my flesh is strength. I will sing, I will sing. It's really good to sing in miserable situations. Now listen, here's Paul and Silas. They get thrown in jail. They get thrown in jail, not just in jail, but in the deepest part of the jail. How many folks have ever gone to like an old dungeon that's like a 100 years old and checked it out? Two people. How many went to like a 500-year-old dungeon and checked it out? How many went to like a 1,000-year-old dungeon and you've checked it out? How many ever been to like a 2,000-year-old dungeon and checked it out. I mean, a 2,000-year-old dungeon, you know what's at the bottom of the dungeon? Poop. Everything runs. They're locked in stocks in the worst place in the whole building. And it's filth. I'm telling you, the five-star hotels in that day had open sewers outside the door. So we're talking the jail. The worst spot in the jail. The most difficult spot. I don't even know if we're going to get killed in the morning or what they're going to do to us. I have no idea. And we're in stocks. And we've just been whipped. So I'm in stocks. My back is open, cut, bleeding flesh. That means what's in the bottom of the jails? Rats. So what's crawling on my back right now going... And I got stocks, so I can't even help the guy next to me because we are trapped like this going, this is so exciting. I have rats eating the flesh off my back. I am so excited. Hey, the song's not out yet, but I stepped in the spirit and I saw it a couple years later, a thousand years later, maybe 2,000 years from now, guy's going to write a song. Guy was a slave runner of all things, but he got touched by God and got totally set free and when he realized that God would save a wretch like me a dog like me let's sing that song together you ready Silas amazing grace how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Do you know what Brian's doing right now? You know what he's doing? He's tapping his foot. 
You know why Brian's tapping his foot? Because that was some good singing. You know what God did when he heard Paul and Silas start to sing? He started going, that's some good singing. And he went, tap. And he went, oops, sorry about that. Tap, oop, oop, tap. And an earthquake took place. The building started to fall apart. Not too much apart because they're in the bottom of it. But all the doors were open. All the chains fell off. Why did that happen? Because at the midnight hour, at the darkest hour, when you start singing a song unto the Lord, at that deepest, most miserable place in your life, if you will do that, then you will change. And you'll start singing to your circumstances that something has to shift. And you can do that. You can sing and say, in the name of Jesus, I want these to change. And what's beautiful about that is not only do your chains fell off, but it says that immediately all the doors are open and everyone's chains were loosed. Say, that's good right there. That's good right there. So singing towards your circumstances can change your whole world. Anybody got some circumstances you need to sing at? Because you can do that. No, that was just for Paul and Silas. That was just for those guys. That was just in Bible times God did that. No, you can sing into your circumstances, and you can bring a total transformation into where you're at. All right, I want to turn a sharp corner here. You ready? Say sharp corner. Say, listen, Pastor. All right, here we go. Number five, towards injustice. Towards injustice. You can sing towards injustice, and this has happened all over the world. And this happens all the time, and some of this probably needs to happen more today. I see it slipping into some nonsense today. I see people thinking they got to choose sides, and they got to pick a lane, or they got to pick this. And I'm a little disturbed at the violence and the foolishness, the things that are going on in the world. But you know what? Literally in the psalm that we sang, it says you can sing to the nations. You can sing to the peoples. And it's not just us. It's not just over us. It's not just singing for a blessed me thing. But you literally can have a song that you sing that you can sing to injustice. You can dance on injustice. And you can change things going on in the world. Can I get an amen? I will sing of the mercy, I will sing of his mercies and justice to you, O Lord. I will sing praises, justice. First Corinthians 13, 6, the love chapter, he talks all about love. He says, love does not rejoice about injustice, but it rejoices when truth wins out. Truth wins out. See, song is also connected to not just all the things we can have as a community, but there's a song that we must sing because we're a responsible community. And there's a song that we have to sing to the nations. There's a song that we have to sing to injustice. There's a song that we have to sing that changes the society we're in. Can I get amen? And this is important stuff. We can't stand idly by. I mean, the church, sadly, has been late to the show. They've been late to the game. And often, not only have they been late, but they've been on the wrong side of the opinion. They didn't even know what the opinion was. But, you know, the church should be in a place where the church really is leading in the realm of transformation and love. It's in our mission statement as a church that we are impact church, transforming lives to impact their world. Not just your little world, but the world. Wherever you are, you're being an impact. Wherever you are, your life, there's a song. You're singing and you're manifesting something where you are that is transformative where you are. And there's an aspect, why do I sing? Sometimes we're singing because there's injustice and somebody's got to sing to it. Somebody's got to speak to it that something in the nations has to change. It's getting serious in here. Oh, my God. Hey. Hey. Singing, singing, singing toward injustice. Let me help you out a little bit. This is from uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. This was in Memphis. It was actually, I believe, one of the last speeches he gave before he was shot. Martyred, murdered for a cause. There's just a little bit of it up there. I'm going to read the whole thing for you. And I'd like you to listen. I know it's hard to listen when somebody's just reading, but I want you to hear. Here's what he said. He's speaking at a a union meeting. And he said, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome. The interesting thing is we shall overcome. If you go back one slide for me, go back one slide for me. It says, I shall overcome someday was by Charles Albert Tindley. And it was a hymn. And this was the hymn that often Martin Luther decided that this whole thing needs a song. This whole thing, we need to have a song. This whole thing needs to be wrapped in a narrative. And this whole struggle, we have to sing to the nations. We have to sing to culture that something has to shift. And he chose this song. And this was a a, a fellow whose mom was a free woman and his dad was a slave in the late 1800s. And he became the janitor of a church in Philadelphia. And later on, I think it was in 1906, he became the pastor of that church. And the church went from... 
like 130 people to about 10,000. It was an amazing man, never educated, never anything, but a guy who knew how to sing into injustice. But Martin Luther picked this up, and so here's what Martin Luther said. He said, deep in my heart I do believe we shall overcome. Now I join hands with the students and others behind jails and bars, and we sing it. We shall overcome. Sometimes we've had tears in our eyes, and we've joined together to sing it, but we still decided to sing it. We shall overcome. Lord, before this victory is won, some will have to get thrown in jail, and more and more will, but we shall overcome. Don't worry about us. Before the victory is won, some will lose their jobs, but we shall overcome. Because before the victory, because some must pay uh, to free their children from a permanent psychological death, then nothing more shall be redemptive. We shall overcome. Before the victory is won, some will be misunderstood and called bad names, dismissed as rebel rousers and agitators, but we shall overcome that's the place true worship that is pleasing to god will take us it'll take us to the jails to the lost jobs and even to death and it will be called i'll be called or it will be called a rebel rouser and an agitator it will sing the words of wholeness where the spirit and the body are at peace i i mean i can't do that like he did that but there was somebody who with a movement of total nonviolence and absolute peace shifted the heart of a nation. And it was a song attached to that. What's the song in this generation? What's being sung? I should show you that songs can impact a world. Songs can speak and they can speak to the injustice. People need to come in here and they need to hear a song. They need to hear in your life. They need to hear coming out of you a song of peace, a song of unconditional love, a song that declares, I sing because when I sing, I'm speaking to a culture and I'm speaking to a nation. I sing because I want to see transformation. One more song, another song. You ready? This is from my favorite worship team ever. I kid you not. This is so good. If you've never seen when you two led worship on, uh, what was the late night show? They sang, uh, I think it was uh, Jimmy, I think it was Jimmy Kimmel, actually. Look it up. And on Jimmy Kimmel, he got on and he said, I'm going to, he said, this is, this is from a frustrated preacher and this is a gospel song. And he sang that song and they didn't know it, but all through the crowd, he'd already placed the choir and the choir stood up and sang with them. And he said, I still haven't seen what I'm looking for. He says, I've seen salvation. I've seen what Jesus has done, but I still haven't seen peace on earth. I still haven't seen the full manifestation of the hope of the gospel in the earth. He says, I still haven't seen it, but I will see it one day. And they all began to sing. I mean, I had goosebumps on oh, my goosebumps. I was like, man, did that ever go? And you see that whole place, suddenly everybody spontaneously didn't know why they're all out their hands up going. You know, songs like that can touch and they can transform, they can move people from, from positions of hatred and, and, and establishing, this is where I stand on this. You know, stop standing on this and reach out your hand to a person. Because where you stand isn't as important as the people that are in front of you and the people that are before you. Because we're not against stuff. Some people, they think they're against stuff, but you know, it looks like you're against people. You know, people are important. The issues aren't half as important as the people that are in front of us every day. And I don't know why we get caught up in that stuff. Very interesting Thanksgiving sermon, by the way, Pastor. This song was sung... Uh, one man came in the name of love. One man come and go. One man here to justify. One man to overthrow. In the name of love. Uh, he wrote that song back in the 80s. The song was called Pride. And he wrote that song because it was in response to a fact that in that day, they were all trying to say, some people said, we think Martin Luther King's birthday should be a holiday, a holy day. And a lot of people didn't agree. And a lot of, there's massive divisions of people saying, we can't do that, we should do that. And some people said, are you kidding? What a transformative life. There's a guy in our life who totally transformed the view and the heart of a nation. And there's a lot of people who were opposed to it, and especially in the South. And here he was, he was in Tempe, Arizona, U2 in Tempe, Arizona, and they were on their concert tour, and when they got to Tempe, Arizona, he got a bunch of letters from one individual that said, if you sing Pride at your concert tonight in Tempe, Arizona, I will kill you. It'll be the last song you ever sing. And so they shared that with the police and all these things. They said, this is a pretty open place where you're going to be singing and all that. We would really encourage you not to sing it. 
Because you're putting yourself in a place, and we don't know how we could protect you. It's pretty easy. I mean, this is back in the 80s. So, I mean, they say it's pretty easy for somebody to get in there or find a way that, you know, if this person's really serious, it could be the last song you sing. Well, the band got together, and they said, you know what? We wrote that song, and we believe God's called us to be a transformative people. And we believe that that song was given to us to sing that song to be transformative and share and try to bring healing in the nations. And so, you know, Bono said... You know what, I'm singing it. When it comes up in the set, I'm singing it. And they started the intro to that song, and Bono walked to the front of the stage, and he stood there, and he began to sing. He said, I closed my eyes, and I didn't open my eyes for the whole song, and I just sang the whole song in the name of love. And he said, what's interesting is, was when I was done, I opened my eyes, and he didn't know it, but Adam, I think it's Adam Clayton, he was the bass player. When he started singing, Adam Clayton went with his bass guitar and stood right in front of him, and he played the bass And Bono had no idea when he opened his eyes, he saw the back of his head and went, wow. And he said, you know what, if some idiot wants to do something stupid, I'll take a bullet for you because this is important. We've got to sing this song. Sometimes, I'm a national leader of an organization. I get pressure from people. They, They want me, what do you got to say about this? What do you got to say about the shootings in Vegas? What do you got to say about this? What do you got to say about that? I don't want to ever be pushed into an opinion or a side. What I got to say is this. I love people. And you know, when it all ends, it's every nation, every tribe, every tongue. We're all going to stand before the Lord. Every single one of us. Every one of us coming through the blood. Every one of us created absolutely significant and wonderful. And you know what? The song in your heart better sing that. The song in your heart better include thanksgiving for the people around you. And the song in your heart better speak to situations in the world where there's any abuse, there's any racism, or there's any area where anybody is narrowed for any aspect of their life. You better have a song that is singing to the nations because that's what that Psalm 96 says. Sing to the nations. Sing to injustice. Sing to things that need to change. And that's why I sing. Come on, stand up with me. I got another slide, I think, at least one. There it is. I will praise the name of God with a song, and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. I'm not into political stuff, and I hope I didn't offend you or anybody, but the Bible says that, you know, love stands up where there's injustice. It shows up where there's pain. It shows up where there's hurt. You know what? I am thankful right now that I can sing, and we should sing for all those reasons. Now, listen, can you bow your heads, close your eyes, just... Hang tight. Listen, if you're here today, you wanted it, it's Thanksgiving. You know, he loves you, and he's totally for you. You know, the, the full realization of who you are and what you're created for will never be realized if you're not in a personal relationship with your Heavenly Father. It won't happen. It really won't. And he's a good God, and he loves you, and he's nuts about you. And you know, he says, to whoever receives him, he gives them the right to become children of God. To those who receive him, You know, if you've never received him as your father, that's really what you have to do. And if you're here today, and I'm not sure, I'm kind of cloudy on that. Have I received him as my father before? You can do that right now because he loves you. And you're not joining an impact team or, or some club or something. You're being restored to what it is to know him as your living, loving, gracious, heavenly father. And if you want to do that today, I just want to pray with you before you go. But we're going to do something real easy. It's real easy. I'm going to go one, two, three, and then put up your hand. At three, I want you to put up your hand and say, yeah, that's me. Can you pray for me? I want to experience his love. I want to have his song in my heart. I want to experience that restoration. I want to experience what it is to know him as my heavenly father. That's me. At three, I want you to put up your hand high enough so I can see it, okay? Are you ready? Here it is. One, two two three just throw your hand up really high thank you anyone else just lift up your hand really high so i can see it anyone anyone all right listen you're gonna pray with me now okay you ready everybody's gonna pray so you put your hand up you're gonna pray just pray it out loud so you can hear yourself say this lord jesus like the scripture said i receive you And because I receive you as my Lord and Savior, I have the right to be called a child of God. So you are my Heavenly Father. I am forgiven, I am healed, and I am free. 
And I receive you right now as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And somebody might chat with you. Somebody might come up and ask you to fill out a little form or something. So nobody was looking except them. <laughs> but that's because we don't want you to just make a decision. We want you to get fully discipled of what it is to be a child of God. So happy Thanksgiving. Just look around at yourself and somebody nearby and just say happy Thanksgiving. It's so good to be a part of this family and so good to see what God's doing in our hearts and lives. And this is a season of acceleration. It's a time of more and more. We command his blessing on it all. Are you ready? I'm going to bless you right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for Impact Church. Thank you for our family here. We thank you that you always spread a table for us to feast on your goodness. We thank you that we're never absent from your table. You're always our Heavenly Father. And your table is always full of blessings and favor. We just thank you. We give you thanks on this weekend. We thank you. And let all those reasons for singing, let all of those reasons for thanksgiving, I pray you'd push them deep in the heart of every one of us. Because, Lord, we have some responsibilities. And we need to sing on purpose. So, Father, I bless this house. In the wonderful name of our loving Father, in the beautiful, gracious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and in the sweet fellowship and partnership of Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, wh whoever's doing prayer teams up here, if you could come on up and you know if you got to go eat turkey right away, I understand. But if you need prayer for anything today, you need minister in any way, i got prayer teams that are ready to pray for you today, people ready to minister to you. And, you know, it's a good place to come to the altar. God can meet you here and touch you here, do a miracle here. So I just tell you, the altars are open, so come if you need prayer. Otherwise, God bless you. Have an awesome Thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen.